Hi guys, I'm Will from VPN Mentor. Welcome to our tutorial and review of Norton VPN. Today we'll do an overview of the VPN service they offer, check out the registration and payment process and install their application to see how it works. Finally, we'll test the performance of their network so you don't have to. If you find this video helpful, please like, share and leave comments in the section below. And here we are on the home page of Norton's VPN page. And the first thing that caught attention is that they offer services for one or multiple devices with 10 being the highest number, as well as some bundles which we'll check out later. Also it appears they're available for all mainstream operating systems. Scrolling down we see their service includes several features, out of which ad blocking comes as the most interesting one. We can also see they keep no logs which is very useful for torrenting. Encryption is a part of Norton services which makes sure your online browsing and moving through the pages remains anonymous. We can also see they are currently offering a bundle which we mentioned previously, where for yearly subscription you'll get Norton Security Deluxe coverage for a selected number of Wi-Fi capable devices you connect. Cancelling the subscription is possible anytime and they include a money back guarantee as a part of the subscription under certain conditions which we'll check out in a few moments. Here we can see a few pieces of advice on how to stay safe while browsing, as well as the system requirements for installing the mobile app or desktop version of the program for Windows, Mac, Android and iOS. Let's check the process of signing up for a subscription now. After selecting the plan for one device, we can see that the total may include taxes, and they are accepting credit cards as well as PayPal. Unfortunately no Bitcoin or any other anonymous payment option is available. Here we are presented with a sign-in page where we'll create an account for checkout. Before zooming, I should mention that we offer coupons on VPN services on our coupon page, so you can have the best deal no matter which service you choose. If it helps cut down the cost of your purchase, please make sure you share it with the world. Going back to the process of ordering, after creating an account, we are presented with the billing page, where we select PayPal as the preferred paying method. But after selecting the required boxes, there seems to be a problem with the service and we weren't able to continue with the purchase. That's why we proceeded with checking out using a credit card. Here we can see that the list of supported countries for billing is rather short, including only North America, mostly surrounding island states, so take that into account before ordering. Now when we're done with the order, let's download and install a desktop application. Here we can also see that our subscription is active and the next billing date. That's also the place where you can cancel your subscription. Now, we've installed the program and after running it, we need to sign in before using the service. And we're signed in now, and as soon as the window is open, we can see we're using an insecure connection, and there's our current location and IP address. By clicking on virtual private network button in the bottom right corner of the window, we enable the VPN, which is currently set to auto select. The network of choice is Netherlands, and we can see we're now using a secured connection based in Amsterdam. If you wish to connect through any other country, you can manually choose under Virtual Location tab. Ad Tracking tab shows us that the program is blocking ads on the go, with a number of ads blocked since installed. There are a few options to choose from the settings menu, where we can select the program to start when the computer is turned on, to connect automatically upon starting and to install the same program on another device. There is also a shortcut for the account settings. Let's take a look at the actual performance. We're connecting through our original network to test the speed. And you can see our current location. The current ping is 11 milliseconds, download speed of 42.73 megabytes per second, and an upload speed of 3.95 megabytes per second. Resuming with the test, we'll try to open Netflix, which has some content that is restricted in our country. One of that is a TV series called Futurama. And as you can see, there are a lot of results related but the actual show isn't there. Let's try now the same but with a connection from the US. After connecting, we can see that our current location is New York and with a different IP address. Before we continue, we need to clear cookies and other browsing data. And we're running the speed test. Ping of 130 milliseconds isn't bad, but the download speed is only 4.76 megabytes per second and the upload speed is 2.33 megabytes per second. Comparing the results shows how big the difference between numbers is, but that shouldn't be a problem for streaming content from Netflix. Heading back to their website, searching again for the Futurama series, and here it is. Now to check whether it's working. 
seems to be no problem in playing and buffering. After completing the test, let's try to cancel our subscription and ask for a refund. Here we can see that the subscription policy does not offer a refund, except in special cases and cancelling the monthly subscription will only cancel the automatic billing from your account, which is not something we expected. If you'd like to know more about Norton's VPN, I suggest heading to our review page where you can find out many details regarding their service, like expert reviews, their current rating and also compare them to other VPN providers. Ok, so to conclude our tutorial, let's quickly compare the information we got. The good thing is that we easily unblocked any geo-restricted content, they keep no logs so it's safe for torrenting and the application is available for all major operating systems and is very easy to use. The main problem is that they don't offer a refund for monthly subscriptions, except in certain cases. Also, the PayPal billing method wasn't working correctly when we tried it, so that may be a head turner for some. So that's it for our tutorial, if you found this video helpful please like, share and leave comments in the section below.